Psst, disclaimer. When your familiar is proficient with light armor, a diamond is eight pounds. The local hawks kept trying to nab her, so now she has a battle suit. <laughs> is that pasta? <laughs> Hey there, baby. Wanna roleplay today? Oh my, I'm so glad to hear it. Let me just bring my die, oh my god, gonna roll a 20 on that. Uh, sorry. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Well, good evening, ladies, lasses, and lassos, and welcome to the Click You Look Dandy Finalicious today. I do hope you feel Dandy Finalicious too, because you deserve it. Today we're gonna look at something beautiful that I've been looking forward to for a long time. We're gonna look at D and D memes. Can I can I get a hoorah from my fellow nerds in the crowd? That's right. Everyone is together on this. I do hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy, subscribe to channel for memes. Oh my God, who does not like memes? Yeah, Facebook Karen. Sorry, getting personal about this. Enjoy. DM, you are sentenced to death, but the judge is feeling merciful and lets you choose how you die. Rogue, mm, strike to the heart, please. DM, uh, sh sure, I'll, I'll allow it. The sentence is carried out. Your lifeless body falls down and I cast Revivify. What? I bring him back to life with his death penalty just being carried out. We can move on with the next quest, right? DM, huh? Listen here, you little sh. You think they would really accept that? Haha, -ha, he has been executed. and it's like, Brin. Okay, now that that's over with, can we get going? We're just playing the game. That's a really pun, but it's still a pun that I'll take it. Blow my mind! Hmm, I've finished two D&D campaigns from level 1 to 20. How? How is that possible? Jesus. In my experience, groups usually just fall asunder after, after a solid, like, five to six levels. <laughs> Bard with wish. I am going to change the world. Rest of the party. <laughs> for the better, right? Bard. The party. For, for, for the better, right? <laughs> better for me, perhaps, but, you know, if if you are like-minded and chaotic and, and flirty and wants to wants to do the naughties to everything that is remotely humanoid, including dragons, then I guess we're on the same page, if I may say so myself. The DM. <laughs> the one person who showed up every time to the D&D sessions but had to leave. No. Oh, they're more valuable than your own family. 16. It's over, Anakin. I have the higher role. 2. You underestimate my lucky feet. 2. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> well, Anakin, you're looking quite hot there. Oh, my God. You're a hot mess. <laughs> Let me give you a hand, cause you lost yours. Oh, druid of the ground, what is your wisdom? 20 lol. Oh, great. I just love it. Thank you. BBEG. I cast dominant person on your preciously protected bod. Bod, I, I fail. Party. Oh, God. BBEG. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> Claps. Thunder clap. Party, that wasn't so bad. BEG, legendary action. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Clap them. <laughs> Succumbing to applauding yourself to death. I like it. It's a very, it's a very nasty way to go, and I'm all for it. 1:32 p.m. Uh, what does a succubus look like? 8:43 p.m. <laughs> How to delete search history? <laughs> no, you want the most suggestive villains. Wouldn't that be really, really difficult? You have like overly flirtatious succubus and vampires that you fight? It's like, oh my god, no. It's so distracting. I have never been to Las Vegas, but I love it in concept because it sounds so made up. Imagine if you were reading a fantasy novel and they were like, smack in the middle of a deadly inhospitable desert, there's a glittering city of indulgence and lawlessness and cheap sin that has specifically engineered itself to obfuscate your sense of time and keep you there as long as possible while they take all your valuables. You'd be like, yeah, that's some wizard Shite. Places to add to my next D&D campaign. Las Vegas. <laughs> Welcome, adventurers, to Las Vegas. Honestly, that would be so cool, though. I might do that for my next adventure. Implement, like, a casino with real gambling mechanics, where it's like, you, you have this legendary blade here that will make the final boss fight possible, <laughs> but you also have to gamble for it. So I basically just encourage the players to indulge in a gambling addiction, and they have to go around and do mini-quests and keep going back to this casino to try to gamble and win that final sword. Holy sh- that is such a good quest piece. Oh my god. And it's completely random as well, so it's gonna be frustrating and hellish. Oh. <gasps> I bet they're gonna get into the first roll just because I spent hours preparing all the side quests, but, you know, it's, it's, it's the thunk that matters. Me 
running a cluster frick first ever campaign? Oh, it's so sad. Hey man, that was a nasty fall, need a hand. Chads on Reddit. It's okay that your campa campaign is a cluster frick. In my experience, some of the most cluster fricked campaigns are, are the ones that are the most fun to remember. If you just have a vanilla campaign where everything is going according to plan, it's not really that memorable. You need some garbage ideas, you need people to fail, you need some characters to explode. I remember, for example, when I wanted to kill off my character in the campaign, and uh, and I, I accidentally killed off my friend's character too, because the DM was just so sick of my <laughs> <laughs> We came into like a house, and there was like a wanted person there, but we didn't know he was wanted, it was part of a side quest, and we just botched everything. So I just, <laughs> I just locked the door and started tossing Molotovs around, <laughs> and the DM was just like, okay, you all burn inside and die. <laughs> and my friend was like, wait, I didn't want this! I didn't ask for this! Leading up to that point, we had just been riding on horseback, tossing Molotovs and, and knives at, at like passerby villages. We were real rascals. We were just asking to get killed. And finally we were. I think I tossed like a, like a, no, no, it wasn't Molotovs. I tossed a liquor bottle into a fireplace and rolled a critical 20. So the whole liquor bottle basically exploded in a fiery hell and the entire house caught fire and the door was jammed. So we all just died instantly. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, the beauty. How D&D is presented on TV. A band of stoic heroes fight dragons and rescue maidens fair. Actual D&D. Dysfunctional adopted family, a bisexual disaster, kleptomaniac set everything on fire while drunk and flirt with anything vaguely humanoid. <laughs> I'm gonna make a wizard bard that does all of this at the same time. A pyromanic wizard bard, who's also kind of pervy. It's, it's usually fun. Move in with a new roommate. He's never played D&D. Says that he's willing to try D&D for the first time and ask if I can DM a game. Has three other friends that also want to try playing. They have never seen Lord of the Rings? Oh my god, imagine that. If you have an entire crew where nobody has seen Lord of the Rings and you can basically just... Here's the map that uh, I prepared. <laughs> it's called Middle Earth. <laughs> and evil Lord Sauron like, Damn, man, how long did it take you to do this? Not that long. Wizard casts an incredible spell using the sum of all that acquired knowledge throughout the years. Yes. Barbarians. I like your funny words, magic man. Don't patronize me. I, I did my... I've tried for a long time. I'm very smart, okay? My brain is very, very big and throbbing. If someone tries to villainize you for setting boundaries, you may as well lean into it. Buy a long dramatic robe, moving to a tower, raise an army of the undead, send ominous letters sealed in black wax. Could be fun, and they might reconsider their standards for villainy. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty valid. It's so fun to be a villain DM and roleplay like the evil necromancy mayor of a town. I think the best villain I ever constructed in DM to this date, I called him Lil Tim, and he was actually really big. And, and his whole, whole deal was he like, it was kind of a necromancer, but not really. The whole thing was like, they were, they were stranded on an island, and nobody on this island grew past a certain age. And that was because Lil Tim kept stealing their life force uh, to keep himself young. So he was like 500 years old, but everyone else on the island never lived past like 20. Uh, so that was kind of a, kind of a twist. And he was, he was uh, very good. I printed a picture of the classical thick, nice guy neckbeard with a fedora as his, <laughs> as his player picture. <laughs> Disadvantage. Fortunately, I have the lucky feet. Three nat ones. Pfft. Oh, my only weakness. It's just like when God rolled your stats in real life. Ooh, let's check intelligence and charisma. Ah, two and one. Freaking amazing. A couple of July 4th ago, I ran a D&D &D session where a town was fed up with a local baron who kept forcing them to buy shipments of chamomile. My elaborate ruse dawned on the players about three hours in, when the Aroka rebel told them to dump the tea on their boat into the lake. <laughs> Oh my god, that's, that's a bit of a throwback. Me showing up to the table after promising not to make another swashbuckler rogue. This is the tale! I had a swashbuckler rogue halfling named Bazo Diggle. Bazo Diggle's backstory was amazing. His family was murdered by pirates when he was a wee child, and he was taken aboard a mer merchant ship that he essentially changed into a pirate vessel as he grew up and was very commanding. Imagine like a Jack Sparrow that squeezed about to a fifth of the size, kind of fat, very much a dad bod, and constantly drunk. 
Uh, this person, of course, also opened bars. He had basically a, like a McDonald's chain of bars all over the place. So whenever we went to do a village and kind of established ourselves and defeated the villain, he always established a pub. Uh, so he was insanely rich. Uh, out of the party after this campaign had been going on for a while, he had like unlimited gold, gold coins. So the so the DM had to like do like an inflation thing to just nerf the richness of Basso Diggle. <laughs> and I think we made a a homebrew rule where he had a bonus to damage and and like basically critical hits and stuff if he was drunk, but he had a downside to it if if he was sober. So uh, it was important to always carry a bottle of whiskey into battle. That was. Basso Diggle. I think he was the one who burned himself alive inside the house. Yeah, I think that was Basso Diggle. Man, rest in pieces. The party. We should react to this problem reasonably and logically. The rogue. The naked man fears no pickpocket. <laughs> you only have one pocket, if you know what I mean. Do you want some company in your, in your pocket? Anyway. A wizard. Blinking in and out of existence, rolling death saves. Party. Watching him do the death roulette while they try to heal him. <laughs> Look at our little boy. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a wizard. Oh, there you go. When the role player goes too far. Spits mouthful of blood onto floor. <laughs> you become far more powerful since we last crossed paths. Dentist. Please stop. There is literally a sink right next to you. <laughs> Your magic doesn't work on you and me. <laughs> Town guards. This deck is off limits to civilians. A rogue doubling down after failing their deception check. I am terribly sorry. I didn't know. Rogue doubling down after a deception check. If I see one, I shall inform you immediately. Mm. Regret is a reaction, not a free action. <laughs> it's like, I failed my pickpocket. I didn't do that. I, it's, can I take it back? <laughs> My parents in their 30s. This would make a lovely second home for our family to winter in. Hopefully the garage can fit both our car's snowmobile and ski equipment. Me in my 30s. I'll never financially recover from this purchase. But it's worth it. Oh my god, sometimes you just have to roll a die with your life decisions. How would you like to see a D&D &D stream, by the way, if I get a bunch of my... My, my stream people together. I think that could be fun. Very chaotic. Check out my Twitch in the description. I do fun things there. Uh, trust me. If you like having fun, go there. Promise me. It's very fun. Did I mention that it's very fun? Go! Why haven't you got- Check it! Go! <clears throat> Sorry, getting- uh, It's fun, though. The Barbarian tanking the Beholder's death ray. Its death ray doesn't seem to be working. I'm standing right in it and I'm not dead yet. Oh, shh! The CDC just announced that if you're fully vaccinated, you can cast a spell both as your action and as your bonus action, even if neither of them are cantrips. Oh, when I finish creating a colorful and detailed village, my players will never miss it. Oh, it's so beautiful and it's all mine. Nobody will ever see this. Mm, I have a thing for colorful villages. Well, you might get lucky. You might have us as your party and we just ride along and burn down everything we see. We're not a great party. Uh, whenever I DM for our party, I always have some kind of plot device that keeps them in a very, very limited space. And and one of my friends took this advice too. My friend hosted a D&D &D adventure where we're basically uh, gladiators and we're stuck inside a coliseum. I hosted an adventure where they were stuck on uh, a deserted island. And the next adventure I'm planning, they're gonna be stuck in a city because there's a force field around it and they have to figure out why that is the case. So uh, yeah. Keep uh, boundaries. <laughs> it's a good thing. The party. The DM. A surprisingly stupid solution to a problem. If it solves the problem, it's not a stupid solution. Ah, uh, take that, DM. That stands for dastardly mundane. <laughs> ah, there you go. When you finish a four-year campaign and the players keep role-playing after the final whistle. Oh, it's beautiful. They now live in their fantasy world. They cannot tell reality apart from fantasy. It's probably our fault the best. This world is fucking boring. The fun side of the monster manual. The, the party becoming level six. Oh God, please, can we just stay children forever? I don't want to grow up, please. Daddy DM. DM, okay. So the orc bartender. A player, I, I thought you said they were a half orc like an hour ago. They were suddenly more orcish. What, how? Because an hour of player time is 10 hours of DM time and I have the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> Everybody is a shapeshifter if you really want them to. The barbarian, the paladin. I got into the alchemist room and drank slash ate everything. The paladin? The barbarian having every status effect happening at once. I guess it kind of cancels out. They're like OP 
and incredibly weak at the same time. You know, when you invited me over for a role-playing session, I was expecting something. <laughs> Dear friends, I want to be the barbarian. Mm, you can be a, my barbarian. Ravage me, DM. Ah, oh, plan my adventure for the evening, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Tell me the truth. I, I'm ready to hear it. You can't just world build. You also have to write the campaign. Oh, oh I'm so sad. I'm so incredibly sad. Frick, you got... Can't they just sandbox their way through it? Why do I have to build a campaign? It's so boring. If Cthulhu can be summoned by humans who are so far beneath it, why can't humans be summoned by ants? The answer is that they should be. Well, if a bunch of ants formed a circle in my house, I'd certainly notice, try to figure out what they all come from, and possibly wreak destruction there. That's why knowing and correctly pronouncing a true name is so important to the ritual. Imagine how impossible it would be to not go take a look in the circle of ants starting chanting your name. <laughs> and they're like, you can't leave because we drew a line made of tiny crystals, now you have to do us a favor. And you're like, sure, let's see where this goes. Like, yep, you got me. What's the favor? And usually the favor is like, kill this one ant for us, or give us a pile of sugar, and you're like, oh, okay. And you do it, because why not? It isn't hard for you, and boy, is this going to be a freaking story to tell. These freaking ants are chanting your name and wanting a spoonful of sugar, or whatever. And sometimes, you get asked for things you can't really do. One of them, she's like, I love this ant, but he won't pay any attention to me and make me more important to her. And you're like, <coughs> Um, how? So you just kill every ant in the colony except the two of them. Ta-da! Problem solved. And the first ant is like horrified whisper. <gasps> what have I done? This is the best explanation for higher powers I've ever heard. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, yeah? It really it really makes sense. I want to implement this in a campaign where like small little, I don't know, ant gremlin-like people start chanting a player's name and they think they're a god. And then they have to do the same thing themselves later in the adventure to summon like an actual god. And, and they just see, oh my god, we are god to the ants, but this other p thing is a god to us. The perspectives. Mother, when I grow up, I want to be a knight. Oh, honey, you don't want to be a knight. This is a barbarian household. Swing. I guess as long as you <laughs> still destroy your enemies, it's okay. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, yes, maul your enemies together. <sighs> Mother, daughter goes. DM explaining a simple puzzle. If we take this ordinary square... The party, whoa, 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 slow down, egghead. Wizard attempting to intimidate an NPC. The barbarian is assisting. <laughs> you better pretend to be intimidated or I will shove your nose up your anus so it reaches back through your nose and you will have a double nose where your nose once came out. I'll basically turn you into a donut that is overlapping. I am straight, but I play a Goliath who is exclusively attracted to height, so gender goes on the back burner. He currently lives with his hippie furbog BF. Sexuality, tall. <laughs> NPC woman, has a baby. NPC doctor, checks the baby's class. I'm sorry, ma'am, he's a rogue. NPC woman, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm too young to die. I'm sorry, you, you know the rules, takes out dagger. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, I forgot to unmute. I cast detect thoughts. Uh, tabaxi, rogue. <laughs> hmm. No. <laughs> Is it basically just the just the horny furry? <laughs> Someone drew me as a D&D character, as a fan art, and they drew me as a tabaxi bard. Of course they drew me as a tabaxi bard. What else? What freaking else? Fighting something with your high AC when you have high AC. Now you take a hit. Now you take a hit. It was deflected. Next turn. Oh, it was also deflected. Next turn. Oh, your, your hit bounced on the armor. Next turn. Oh, it, it bounced on the shield. Next turn. Oh, it bounced on the thick helmet. Oh, it... It's just a matter of who dies of old age first. Sorceress, having a demon daddy. Warlocks, having a demon sugar daddy. Wizards, reading a book like a nerd. <laughs> Horny bard is cancelled. We are bringing the dad bard to the table. Bardic inspiration, because I believe in you, champ. Vicious mockery, it's all dad jokes. Seducing NPCs, nope. We're using persuasion to get them to give you the information you need because... I am not angry. I'm just very disappointed. A jack of all trades. Yeah, your old dads know just a little bit about everything. <laughs> you want you want to hammer that old sword back together? Have you tried a little bit of handicraft with the nails? Like mediocre, but it sort of works. A song of rest. It's called tucking you in and giving you a bedtime story. Be the one to split up party treasure and tell them that's their allowance. Mix up your game. Put your bard in a polio shirt and cargo shorts. Hit that party with some big dad energy. You forgot the socks and sandals. Dad bard with dad bod. Mm, yes, indeed. That is the sexiest seductive bard. 
ever. Oh, I want to do this. I want to have my, my, my next character has to be a dad bard. Like he's going through a midlife crisis, but he doesn't care. That's <laughs> so amazing. A bard college. Very advanced. Very super advanced. <laughs> I will ruin this party for everyone. Stop by the watch covered in blood. Try these handy excuses. This is my blood and where I wear it is none of your business. Uh, a really big leech threw up on me. I am a bloodogram from your secret admirer. It's, uh, Roseka. It was a very rare steak. Would you believe a menstruation? I said holding a knife. I was used to wipe up a spill. Gosh, I am so bad at math. Oh, silly me. I forgot to sheath my sword again. DM, it's not locked. Rogue, I open the chest. Your hand sticks to the chest. Oh my god, it's a mimic. Nope, sovereign glue. Who, who, who hurt you? Oh. And now you're stuck with a chest on your hands all the rest of the game. Good luck sneaking or pickpocketing now, you little rascal. DM, that's an interesting spell you just used. Where did you find it? Player. Oh, it's a homebrew. The rules lawyer. <laughs> Allow me to investigate. When you ask your players what they'd like to see more of in the campaign. Hmm, violence. Oh, is that all you want? Blood, smiley. <laughs> Bodily liquids are the best outside of your body. When the wizard paralyzes someone, <laughs> that's normal. When the barbarian paralyzes someone, yeah, we have we have no painkillers, but I'll, I'll... <laughs> there you go, boy. I think it's time we get back into meeting at my house for game night. Why? There is no commute time. It's easy for scheduling. No need to lug all our supplies. Why do you want us all to come back to your house so bad? T -t to be honest, I, I miss your menace on the settings I make. Picking your cool new die when they roll off the table and the yum snacks you bring. But really, mostly, I I miss the hugs. Oh, Meeting people online in general is very convenient, but it doesn't replace the entire experience. It really doesn't. Make sure to meet your friends when you can, safely. Um, it adds a lot of value to life. No, Henry, you can't sit at the kids' table. I don't care that you're talking about Pokemon and D&D. You'll stay here and talk about fixed-rate loans and deductions. Oh my god, I hate being a f grown up. Jesus, no, let me sit by the children's table. If you wanted to marry an adult, you should have picked Steve, not me. Oh. When we play D&D, but kept our characters a surprise for the first sessions. All Tifling Sorcerer Party, woo, look at that, we're all, we're all matching. <laughs> oh my god, it's all a surprise, how fun. People asleep with their phone on silent, or D&D, really don't give a f about nobody's life. I, I spent two minutes staring at this, wondering how I could set my phone to Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, wait, wait, what? Silent or- Oh, uh, do not disturb! Great minds are confused alike. When the player character that made a bisexual character come out as bisexual months later, everyone at the table, including his sister- <gasps> What? Oh my god. Oh, I'm so shocked. My surprises are through the roof. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Vampirism is a pyramid scheme. Oh my god, that is a piece for a future campaign. It's basically a scam company that turns people into vampires and, <laughs> and the party has to stop it. And they market themselves around town like, Turn yourself into your own immortal boss, babe. <laughs> okay, I'm reading the rest of the comment. I'm getting, getting ahead of myself. I sire you as my vampire thrall dedicated to an eternity of service, creating a vampire franchise where you can sire your own thralls, each of whom owns you an eternity of service. It is a pyramid scheme. Multi-level vampirism. Mm. A druid. I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. DM. <laughs> yeah. I use my action to smoke some herbs and I go on a 12 second back in time to change that. Why on earth do you think that would work? Time travel. <laughs> I allow it. <laughs> Puns always win. Speaking of the dad bard, I feel that the entire party could just be dads. Can we, can we have that please? Can we have a campaign where everyone is just dads? Oh my god, that's amazing. Hey champ. Good go in there. Oh. And then you have the muscular gym dad as the barbarian. Oh, so good. If you ever have to completely improvise a meta dungeon for some reason, may God have mercy, find a map of a large asymmetric shopping mall, preferably with multiple levels for the layout. That is such a good idea. So uh, uh, this Malthar guy, is he a good necromancer or like he is, is he a bad guy? Castle really has that dilapidated evil look to it, so that fits the bill. Where I'm biased, I can vouch for the master's moral character. Practically raised him myself. Then he repaid the failure by raising me. <laughs> if you'll pardon the undead pun. As for the state of the castle, the upkeep of an ancestral state, the size is very expensive. Ominous organ music! And the, and the evil soundtrack? The organ is haunted, sir. It only plays the most ominous bit from that one slightly ominous song whenever it feels the mood calls for it. It feels that way, uh, a lot. 
Even more ominous organ music. My blee. I know I can't roleplay and I'm not musically talented, but I'll but I'll make a dwarven bard for a very important reason. I am the dwarf and I'm digging a hole. Dig it, dig it. You died. You dug too deep and couldn't get out. <laughs> Discourage horny bards by including glory hole mimics. Modern problems require modern solutions. Oh no, that's horrible. No, you sadist, you sadist, you say, you horrible sadist. Why? DM, so you want to play a changeling cleric of the trickster? Player, yeah, and I want to multiclass into assassin rogue. And I was thinking of picking the noble background. W wait a minute, you, you, are you playing? La 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 Loki, baby. Oh yes, the trickster god. Mm. The lich locking his phylactery in his impregnable fortress. I am a genius. This is a lock picking lawyer today. We have an interesting. But oh no! Player whose character is about to die. DM about to kill the PC. Oh, uh, come on. Oh, here you go. Snacks. I live completely legitimately. How I see the vampire. Mm, yes. How the players see the vampire, Rar XD nuzzles you. My husband is a DM and I'm going to start playing his new campaign. He told me when he read my backstory he had to do a double take because he was too good. But I've also seen him take a double take of a free pile of dirt. Wait, free dirt? Where was the free dirt? Do you think it's still there? Oh. I want to roll around in the free dirt. The beautiful things in life come from free, including dirt. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, you beautiful beans. Make sure to follow my Twitch down in the description for fun streams and potentially a future D&D stream. I think that could be fun. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this beautiful video and I do have a beautiful day because you deserve it and have an awesome rest of your day.